If you are sitting at home next to your radio, you're hearing the music faster than you are if you're in the hall. Listening for the secret, searching for the sound. This is the Sound Podcast with Ira Haberman. Fresh off of three shows with Everyone Orchestra and a fall tour with Marco Benevento, I recently had the chance to sit down with bassist Karina Reichman. While she isn't yet a household name, this up-and-comer is taking the scene by storm. When she isn't playing, you can catch her spinning records at bars or hanging out at many of the shows we all go to or wish we were at. Before we get to our conversation, have a listen to Marco Benevento's At The Show, taken from the live Woodstock Sessions recording out last spring.
You can definitely hear Karina's presence on that track. And if you catch any live shows with Marco, you know how active she is on stage playing her instrument and coaching her mates and the crowd. When we sat down, I started by asking how she got involved with Marco in the first place. I came to be playing with Marco uh, directly through his old bass player, Dave Drywitz from Ween and Jared, among other things. Um, uh, yeah, basically when Ween kind of broke up in 2012, uh, Dave was touring extensively with Marco for you know, the next four years. And when Ween came back in 2016, Dave said to Marco, hey, look, you know, there are going to be these dates that conflict between Ween tour and Marco tour, and the only person I want to fill in for me is Karina. And Marco was like, fantastic, let's give her a shot, you know? And uh, so my first run with Marco was in April of 2016, three shows that conflicted directly with uh, Ween at Terminal 5 for three nights, which is a 3,000 capacity room in New York City. And, you know, I just, I was so delighted, like, and be, like, over the moon to, you know, even just be given a weekend, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was completely ridiculous. And uh, so I learned, like, I don't know, 30, 35 uh, of Marco's tunes, just, like, went completely nuts learning them. And, uh, by nuts, I mean, like, you know, I just went, I, I went hard. Like I took it super, super seriously. And, uh, and yeah, after that run, like, you know, there were more, basically when Dave could do Marco shows, he would, but it was kind of 50, 50, like him and me for that summer, summer of 2016. And then by the time September, I think rolled around, uh, Dave kind of passed the torch and threw in, you know, the towel and was like, Hey, you know, Karina, it's your gig now. Like I am too busy. I can't do it. You've, you know, slipped in there so nicely and everybody loves you. And that's, you know, that's the long and short of it. So yeah, since like uh, September of 2016 to now, so a little over a year, I've been full time with Marco, just, you know, doing the thing and, touring and we've been to the UK even which is crazy and you know opening for people like Dispatch and Guster and the Lennon Claypool experience or uh, Delirium sorry and uh and what else Wolfpack I don't know just like between you know opening for big bands and doing our own tours and festivals and all that it's just been such a crazy whirlwind I could have never expected and you know I'm so so I say this all the time, but I'm just endlessly, endlessly grateful to Dave for, you know, having this kind of trust in me and, you know, putting me in that position and endlessly grateful to Marco for being, you know, psyched to have me and just like, I don't know, everybody's embraced me so nicely and I couldn't ask for better. Honestly, it's like a dream still. Like, I just don't even believe that this happened and my life took this turn because, it's ridiculous, Ira. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so psyched on it. It's the best. And and it's amazing because you graduated from the NYU Gallatin uh, program in 2016. So it's really been a whirlwind in the last, what, <laughs> year? A little over uh, a year. Dude, you have no idea. That was so like when I'm describing April 2016 as my first like run with Marco, you know, I had to give my thesis defense like – a month later or not even like, you know, a little under a month later. So all while, you know, learning all these tunes and, you know, having crazy nights on the road and all that, like I'm also thinking about, you know, NYU school stuff and wrapping up my time there four years, no time off, just totally, totally in it. And, you know, it, there was a short period of my like time, like right there where it was Marco was going on. NYU was going on, and I've worked for this concert promotion company called Rocks Off that puts on, you know, we put on club shows too, but like the flagship event is the concert cruise. So I was like, you know, to have I had a full time job. I was in a crazy cool band and learning all the music for it, and I was, you know, graduating with honors from NYU. What the fuck? Out of control. <laughs> Can I say fuck on your podcast? Yeah, Is sure. Why the fuck not? Sure, why not? Yeah, my God. There you go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. Oh, cool. um, awesome. Uh, 
I'm, I'm curious about a degree in music invention and distribution. So what is that all about? There you go. All right. Wow. You, you know all about me. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so at Gallatin, the School of Individualized Study at NYU, basically students get to create their own major or concentration, as we call it. And, uh, you know, it's for like kind of self-motivated kids who, you know, are down to take their own direction and like, like you know, do what makes sense for them specifically, as opposed to like having all these requirements that you have to do and, you know, being kind of dragged through the process, like, you know, some people are. Anyway, right, so right. mine, you know, for me, I, I created, you know, the t- of my thesis or whatever called uh, invention and distribution in contemporary music. And what that means is it's kind of a reflection of my life. Like, you know, it was half the playing music side mm-hmm. of things, mm-hmm. AKA the invention, you know, like the right. creative side and distribution, which was basically uh, reflective of the business side. So I, you know, in school, I did a lot of music business leaning classes and, you know, learned all about that and was working for that concert promotion company the entire time I was in school as well. So, you know, getting credit for that on the outside, NYU Gallatin is great about like if kids have internships and stuff, giving them credit and all that sort of stuff. Um, So that was great. So it was kind of the merging of the two worlds that I'm still kind of straddling, you know, mm-hmm. and that's just a part of my life, you know, it's uh, half business and half creation, if that makes right. sense. Totally. So, uh, so yeah, that was the vibe on that. And, and I guess, I guess the, the question is, is how much is it? I mean, are you, you're playing with Marco when you're not playing with Marco, you're DJing a little bit and you are gigging with, uh, well, you just did three nights with everyone orchestra, and I want to ask you about that. But, like, how much, what What are you doing when you're not playing with Marco? Well, that's the thing. Like, it's an interesting moment in my life because I actually, I still have this job at Rocks Off that I've had for the last five years. So, when even when I'm on the road with Marco, like, you know, the guys can attest, like, in the van, I'll pull out my laptop and, you know, I'll be on the phone with agents and managers and, like, you know, setting up shows and you know marketing shows and making sure everything is running smoothly like even while I'm gone so you know that's a big part of my life as well that I really enjoy um which sounds funny because you know normally musicians don't want anything to do with the business side of things you know what I mean like it's just kind of it's a little bizarre that I straddle both sides of the fence with all that but uh but I really enjoy it and honestly like I'm super lucky to you know, work with uh, someone who allows me to go out on the road for three weeks, you know what I mean? And then, and work from there and then come back and then still have a job, you know what I mean? Like, meanwhile, you know, I try and keep it together pretty, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like I care, I care about, you know, doing a good job while I'm gone and making sure I'm, you know, a good employee. But, uh, but yeah, so I do the Marco thing, the everyone orchestra thing was great. I have been DJing a bunch actually and like even doing private events right. that have been really fun and, you know, trying to hone that in a little bit. I have one on Saturday where I'm going to be doing this, like I call it the Karina's funk review where <laughs> I play like old school funk music, but I'm going to put a twist on it where I'm going to play bass live oh, wow. to the track and uh, I'm going to see if I can hone that in a little bit because I'm interested in, experimenting with that um and i have actually i have like this winter some kind of random fun gigs that have been popping up here and there i'm going to play with uh craig from turquoise and bill carbone from max creek doing a couple dates with them wow Craig's band he calls it headband which is going to be cool uh doing this crazy benefit show on december 2nd at the cutting room with uh it's me marco dave butler my friend Katie Jacoby on violin, Scott Metzger on guitar, and then playing right after us is like North Mississippi All Stars, you wow. know. And then I think we're gonna do a big jam all together. Ah, uh, man, yeah. And then December twenty first, uh, I'm debuting the Karina Reichman Experiment, oh. which is uh, 
going to be interesting. Just, uh, I've been playing with these two dudes who are, I played with them last night for like four hours. And I'm telling you, these guys are on some next level musician trip. Like they are out of control, just a drummer and a guitar player, but the guitar player makes the guitar sound <laughs> like it's, you know, on Mars or something. You right, know, right. he's one of these guys, like totally nuts. And, uh, and yeah, I think we're going to do, you know, an hour of crazy, like mostly improv and whatnot. So that's been cool. Like my, like weird experimental, like acid jazz, totally bizarre, uh, Medeski Martin and Wood among, and you know, Schofield Uber jam inspired band, which is cool. And, uh, and I've been writing some other stuff that's maybe a little more, I don't want to say accessible, but just like, you know, more song based on the side. So we'll see what comes of that. And, uh, and yeah, so, you know, I'm around when I'm home working for Rocksoft, doing various gigs of various sorts, just kind of, you know, always down to play and thrilled to play and in whatever capacity. So, okay. So we got to, we got to, we got to unpack a few things here because there was a lot there and I'm sure, I know, I know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but let's unpack a few things. So let, let's first, because you're fresh off uh, the everyone orchestra thing, uh, I'm yeah. curious about that experience. So you played three nights, I think, uh, Boston, correct, correct. Boston, Philly, and New York. So close, close, close. Worcester, oh. New York, and DC, but close, very close. Close, all okay, all within that same yes area. Um, but but and Worcester to me is Boston. Sorry, Worcester. Yeah, you're so right. <laughs> shout out Boston. Shout out Worcester. Um, how, how first of all, how did you get in touch with Matt, or how did Matt get in touch with you? Because I'm I'm intrigued by I'm really intrigued by how he puts these bands together, and and I told him so. I mean, for me, that's you know you're playing with uh, all star jam band material here. So how how did Matt did Matt contact you and say, are you up for this? Or, or how did that all work? I'll tell you. Um, it actually, you know, dating back pretty much a year ago to the day, um, there was this thing that went down at the Brooklyn Bowl put on by Headcount where it was everyone orchestra basically providing the, I think they called it the soundtrack to history. Mm -hmm. And what that means is on election night, I kid you not, on election night, everyone orchestra played at the Brooklyn Bowl with the election returns being projected behind the band. Uh, Yeah. So, (laughs) you know, for that gig, you know, before we, uh, you know, found out how that all ended up, I, you know, Andy Bernstein, who runs Headcount, is a dear, dear friend of mine. And he basically enlisted me for that gig doing Mark Brownstein from the biscuits was going to do one set and I was going to do the other set, basically trading off base duties right. for that night. And that, that lineup was awesome and kind of similar to the one I just did. It was Natalie Kressman, Magner, Marco did it to, um, you know, snarky puppy horns, Vinnie Amico from Mo. Jeremy Salkin from Big Gigantic, like double drums, very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and other cats I'm probably forgetting, but, it, you know, kind of similar. Like we right. had Natalie this run, we had Magner this run. Um, yeah, so anyway, so I did, like, you know, that night was so bizarre for so many reasons. You can only imagine playing in front of uh, the election returns could be like, yeah. especially when it ended up the way it was. And, you know, I even, I looked out in the crowd, my parents were there that night. Wow. And my parents were just like distraught, you know, and like, <laughs> as the, the map turned redder and redder, they like literally left. <laughs> <laughs> they full on couldn't stay. Like they were just like, we are distraught. We got to go. So anyway, I did it that time, like, you know, basically one set about a year ago. And um, this time around, I got a call, and by a call, I mean email, <laughs> <laughs> from Chris Perella, who is the talent buyer at the Ardmore Music Hall. Right. He's a good pal, and he manages the project. I see. Like, along with Matt Butler. So right. Perella was like, hey, Karina, like, we're putting together the EO lineup for, you know, this little November run. Would you be interested? Are you around? Blah, blah, blah. And I couldn't 
like, yeah, I was super stoked on it. And, uh, I said, yes. And then the rest was history and it just, uh, it just went down. So fun. It was really awesome. We had a really good time. I, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I've been very lucky and like, just, you know, grateful in my life to like be put into situations with people who are way more seasoned, you know, like where I'm the greenest person there, you know what I mean? Like right, all right. these people have been like alive for twice as long as me, let alone like <laughs> playing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, you know, it's just always super humbling and I'm grateful to play with people who are just, you know, better and more, well, you know, let's not experience. Say, let's not say better. Let's say experience because I think. Sure. Let's say that. Let's say <laughs> I think that's a. Call it what you will. But you yeah. Know, it's like, you're yeah, you're obviously kind of you're obviously playing with these people, and we're obviously recognized by Drywitz for for a reason. So let's not say better. Let's say experienced. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so how how was that? I mean, it, that must be a totally surreal experience being up on stage and just looking for cues from Matt and probably from the other musicians up on stage. Yeah, you know, it's very, it's amazing, I gotta say. It's uh, it's a really wild experience, and, you know, when you do that for two hours or 90 minutes, like, however long we were, like, it was, it, every night felt pretty consistently long, and even on the last night, we did two sets. Right. Um, and, you know, that's a long time to be making shit up, like, on the spot. And, you know, in that, there are, like, I don't know, I, I'm very self-critical, so mm-hmm. there are moments where I would be like, oh, yeah, like, that's slamming. Like, that's awesome. Nice, nice. And then there would be parts where I'm like, oh, Karina, so <laughs> stock, dude. That's so shitty. Like, get something better together. You know what I mean? Right. Like, just, like, obviously way too in my head about it. But it's awesome, you know? And, and to play with people like that, you know, I'm a huge Soul Live fan from, you know, I don't know. I remember getting into Soul Live in like eighth or ninth grade and then going to all like, you know, these royal family balls that they would put on or right. like Soul Live and Lettuce. Like, I don't know. I feel like I really have done my time listening to Soul Live and to play with Alan Evans and be the rhythm section with Alan yeah. Evans is fucking unprecedented. Like, that's ridiculous. So I felt awesome about that. I'm a big Mo fan. I'm big. Like, I love the biscuits. You know, it's just cool for me to play with those guys because every time they come to town, I go to see them. You know what I mean? And right. It's just like, wow, like, come on. If I had a nickel for every time I listened to No Doy by Mo, I'd be rich. Like, it's it's cool to get to play with Al Schneer and Magner. And, you know, Natalie's amazing and such a cool girl. Everybody, you know, it was, it was just really great. And uh, it's cool to be able to make things up on the spot with people who have, like, just incredible musical minds and to explore that all together. And Matt Butler does an amazing job of like, you know, moving things along and, you know, he'll be like, hit the four chord or hit the five chord, like, you know, at this time. And, you know, some of the the directions that he'll hold up are very, you know, kind of directed and some are more ambiguous. And I like both ends of the spectrum, you know, when you have to interpret and when, you know, there is no interpreting, it's like, okay, the four chord is this, like, this is when you hit it. So it was cool. Very, very cool. What's cool too is that you're experiencing this with all of the other people in this in this outfit, right? And you're all probably learning at the same time and uh, and obviously performing at the same time. So that must be quite the trip. Totally. It really is. And also like, you know, what's bad about a gig where you have to do zero homework to prepare? It's literally like <laughs> right. you show up, like we all show up and you take everything you know about music, you know, or just like on all your years of playing music and you cast your fate to the wind, you know what I mean? And just go for it. And you throw in your own flavor, you know, however it pours out of you. And it's really cool. It was a very, very awesome experience. And, you know, I hope they'll have me back one day. That would be (laughs) great. I would totally, totally do that gig again in a heartbeat. It was a true pleasure. I'm curious about uh, your move to bass because I saw some footage online of you shred- shredding on multiple guitars and, and <laughs> actually playing music that's probably not consistent with uh, the scene that you're in now. Um, 
have you have you do you still noodle around on the guitar or or are you Karina Reichman bass player for hire right now? <laughs> I definitely play around on guitar, but mostly in private these days. I gotta say, um, you know, I started on guitar. The guitar is where it started when I was thirteen, um, and shortly after, I picked up bass. And kind of played the two simultaneously and very like, you know, I had maybe like two bands where I played guitar and three bands where I played bass, like, you know, in high school and whatever, you know what I mean? And I would just kind of keep up both and, you know, shed tunes on, you know, like I would shed Primus and Bootsy Collins on uh, bass, but I would shed the, I don't know, fish and uh, soul live on guitar, like whatever it was, you know, um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I I definitely feel like more of a bass player now than I ever have. I feel very committed to the bass as an instrument. Um, I love it. <laughs> it uh, it feels right. So you know what? I did one. I'm trying to think of the last like public gig I did on guitar. I think. I mean, well, I did this one. I was on the Today Show, <laughs> um, playing acoustic guitar for this pop star named Julia Michaels. Um, in July or August, not July, whatever. So I guess that counts kind of, I like have never, ever played acoustic guitar, uh, in public, you know, it's not my vibe, but it was, that was awesome. Very cool. So maybe (laughs) there was that. And then I think there was one, I remember playing my Les Paul in front of, I forget where, but I think I did a guitar gig like in February or March, maybe. Wow. And I remember after that gig being like, you know, Karina, you might be a bass player. <laughs> so I think, I think I've crossed this, some sort of line there. Um, but I love both, you know, and yeah. playing guitar definitely, you know, I don't know. I, I definitely did a lot of guitar playing in my youth um, and felt real good on that for a long time. But now I'm definitely like, I'm just looking at my instruments right now. <laughs> like, you know, bass is kind of, uh, it's taken over. It's definitely taken over. What are you listening to? Because you do have such a wide palette of music uh, and taste. I'm curious about, you know, when you get on the subway or you're walking around Manhattan, what what is in your ear right now? Oh, dude, you'd be horrified. Um, <laughs> and by that, I mean, like, just honestly, the range of things. Right. Like, I feel like it would give most people a heart attack. Like, if you saw the way I would flip from... Uh, you know, pavement to wean to built to spill. Okay, that's kind of like in one wheelhouse yeah. to Shabazz palaces and to, you know, Tribe Called Quest and like, you know, all this hip hop and like all that to, you know, I'll put on Fish, I'll put on Mo, I'll like, you know, put on bands like that. But then I'll get into just the weirdest, like avant-garde, like, I don't know. It can really go in multiple, multiple directions. I'm into, you know, RJD2. I'm into Flying Lotus. I'm into the Allman Brothers band. I'm into Cream. I'm into Blind Faith, Zeppelin. Like, I don't know. I go way classic and I go way not classic. And then, yeah, I'll listen to, you know, <laughs> Rancid and Slayer and Pantera and, yeah. you know, uh, Black Flag. Okay, now you're starting to horrify me. I know I'm getting into you, crazy you, territory here. <laughs> you were doing great until you, yeah, until you hit the Pantera button. Um, but you're, 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 you're truly, and and excuse the term, but you're truly a millennial in terms of music because you've grown up probably with access to all of this music, whereas you know people who had to buy records or tapes or CDs probably didn't have access to this as much breadth of music. In, in high school, like you probably did, and, and probably learning about all of this stuff in school. I mean, it's it's probably pretty natural for you to flip back between Pantera and Fish. It, like, for me, it couldn't be more natural. And I love both sides of the spectrum, you know? And I love, you know, actually, I'm really into this one girl who just put out her first debut record, uh, like, in September. Her name's Phoebe Bridgers. And she, like, you know, if you put that on, you'd be like, wow, what is this? Like, it's so soft, but she has the voice of an angel, you know? Like, that's out of character for me, too, kind of, but it's not. I don't know. There's, like, such a wide 
range of things that I'm into from the heaviest of the heavy to the softest of the saddest of the most minimal. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah no, I, I do agree with you. And that's actually, it's a thing I think about a lot. Like I was born in 93, right? So by the time I'm like a conscious, you know, music absorbing person, think about all the, you know, what we would call contemporary or modern music, like music since 1950 that has existed by the time I'm in, you know, in 2006, I'm in sixth grade, you know? So like 2007, I'm in seventh grade. And like, you know, that's kind of when things started. Like I started getting kind of like really nerdy about like, Oh, I have to be a connoisseur. I have to know everything. Like, <laughs> Let me dig into literally everything since 1950, like, you know, going from, you know, fusion to old, old funk music and like, you know, all this stuff, like through the seventies and even like, you know, stuff like Dave Mason and, uh, you know, Todd Rundgren and all this stuff. And then eighties, God help me. Like, you know, I'm totally digging in all sides of the spectrum nineties, you, you know, you get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but it is, it's true. And like, you know, I, I feel lucky in a lot of ways and unlucky in others too have had access to all this music because, you know, again, by the time, like, if you think, if you just think that I'm in seventh grade in 2007, like, you know, what, I didn't grow up when, you know, like, even if I was, if I was a teenager in the early nineties and I could have seen like when blues traveler and the spin doctors and like all these bands were coming up in the New York city jam scene or whatever, yeah, yeah. like that, that would have been my niche or something. You know what I mean? Like I kind of had no niche of my own, you know what I mean? Like, I feel right. like I was in no scene, like no one specific scene, but I'm just so obsessed with music and going to see every show I can, you know what I mean? And listening to every record, like just trying to amass like this, you know, archive of knowledge and like, you know, music in my brain that, uh, that it's, it's cool and it's uncool, <laughs> you know, kind of, I don't know. There's a weird duality there, but I'm definitely grateful to have been, like, you know, born in a time where I can put on, like, literally any weird compilation I want to hear. Like, I can find it online as opposed to having to find it in a record store. Like, if I want to hear this fish jam from, you know, Island Tour, I can find it, you know? Or, like, I don't know. All that stuff is just, it's kind of awesome for somebody who's ADD and, you know, really, (laughs) really nerdy about all this stuff like I am. So, you know. What's interesting too is that you know you're in in you know at the beginning of your career and there's sort of been a renaissance of this kind of music whether it's you know the jam scene in in, in New York or in Brooklyn specifically or what's going on in San Francisco there kind of seems to be this renaissance that's in many ways similar to what was happening at the wetlands in the early 90s and when you know Marco was playing there with with Joe and, and all of that. I mean, there is kind of this, these guys who are now 10 to 15 years older or, or even older than that, when they, when they were playing in those early days of the jam scene in New York, there, there certainly seems to be this renaissance and, and you're part of it. I mean, that's crazy. It is. <laughs> well, thank you. And yeah, I agree. And it's nuts to be, you know, kind of, I mean, it sounds weird to say accepted, but you know what I mean? Like kind of embraced by these folks who are well older than me and, you know, were kind of a part of that, like, you know, the original thing, you know, who I respect, like, you know, to the utmost degree. And, uh, you know, it's amazing to, you know, to play with Marco, you know, like I have all these recordings from him at, you know, Knitting Factory, like the tap room where him and Joe used to play all the time. And, you know, God knows where else, you know what I mean? Like just being, you know, so obsessed with music growing up and like in high school, wanting to have every soundboard recording of everything, you know what I mean? And so, yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable to have, you know, access, not access, but just like, you know, to be embraced into his world and you know to be friends with drywitz is amazing like ween is just my favorite like you know i just flew to austin to go see two nights of ween right after tour that's like you know and i i i have gone to vegas to see ween i've gone to colorado to see ween like you know but then 
he's like my friend, you know? And right. That's weird. How did that happen? <laughs> so crazy. So anyway, yeah, I'm super delighted to, you know, I agree. It, it, it kind of does feel like a renaissance. Yeah, I think so. All of that. And like, you know, if I'm any sort of a part of that, I'm thrilled. Gotta say. Um, before we leave you, I want to talk briefly about the music you're writing because you mention the ADD of all the music you listen to, and I'm curious about: is it singer songwriter stuff? Like, what what kind of stuff are you writing? Not so much. Not singer songwriter. Let's let's definitely not say that. Um, okay. I don't want to say too much about it quite okay. yet because it's still kind of taking shape in different, Fair. you know, different ways. But uh, let's definitely say like everything that I just, you know, brain dumped onto you in terms of things that I'm into. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of it is coming out like right now, somehow. Right. I don't know. Like, you know, I've never been much of a songwriter. Like I've been in bands and like, you know, throughout high school and college and everything. And I've always kind of just been like, more sideman esque right. in all of it and like yeah. throwing in my own like vibes here and there, but never like really taking charge of the musical direction. And now I feel like, you know, I'm kind of settling into a place where I'm just like, you know, it, like it's going to be what it's going to be. Like if I, I feel like I always would get into like a kind of head trip about it being like, ah, oh, like when is, when is a song done? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when, you, you know, every song that we've ever heard in our entire lives, like somebody had to be like, okay, that's the part. That's it. Like, you know what I mean? You have to settle eventually. So I think I'm getting better at making decisions on riffs, on grooves. You know what I mean? Like instead of getting too metaphysical on it, you know, and being like, oh, but it could be like this. Or what if we did this? You know what I mean? And then that's just how things never get done. Um. So yeah, that doesn't really answer your question. No, no, it no. Like, but, uh, but we'll get there. Still, and so you know, yeah. we're intrigued. We're we're definitely intrigued. And I hope that somebody will record the Knarina Reichman experiment because uh, I believe, yeah, that would be good. That'll be really fun. And that I'll tell you what that sounds like. That sounds like uh, you know, yeah, uh, a mix between uh, Medeski, Martin, and Wood, and like. Kind of Benevento Russo duo esque, I gotta say, right. and uh, you know Schofield Uber Jam I mentioned before. Yeah. That's like it's crazy, kind of tripped out, jammy but not jammy, if you know what I mean. Like cool, yeah. it's uh, it's cool, man. So I'm so so stoked on that. And the two dudes I'm playing with are named Adam November and Chris Corsico. And they are just, I, I, like yesterday when we were playing, I was like, I don't deserve these guys. They are out of control musicians. So I think that'll be cool. And I think we will record that. So I'll send it to you. Remind us of what the date is of that. That is December 21st at Littlefield. And that's in Manhattan somewhere. That's in, I think it's in Brooklyn, actually. Oh, okay. Brooklyn. It's, uh, it's a thing for the Freaks Action Network. Are you familiar with the Freaks List? Do you know about this? No, no, no. Oh, man. Well, it might be a story for another time, but basically <laughs> it's, you know, this crew of rabid show-going oh, yeah, folks yeah. that, like, kind of started, you know, around that Wetlands era, I believe. And, uh, you know, they're still, they have a huge presence at most of the shows that, you know. At the bowl and stuff. And, right, yeah, right, 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 exactly. right. Exactly. Like and they have a thing called the Freaks Ball. Um, right. Every so often and that's a thing it's often tied with j-rad or they actually yes. had it in the spring tied to the benevento russo duo at the bowl which is cool anyway it's there they have like a fundraising situation called the freaks action network and it's a uh, it's a benefit for that and you know i'm delighted to be a part of that and to honestly to debut this project in front of the ease people like the freaks is i couldn't i couldn't ask for better awesome so i'm really stoked on that thanks so much for taking the time really appreciate it um i won't have to bug you on facebook now about coming on the show uh <laughs> <laughs> you can bug me anytime anytime it's a true pleasure thank you for having me and we'll hopefully catch up real soon so thank you 
My pleasure. Thank you so much. Cheers. I think you'll agree Karina is both articulate and talented. It's no wonder why she is so active in a scene that currently relies on so many musical veterans to perform great music. We'll be keeping an eye on Karina, and you can too, by checking out her site, KarinaReichman.com or MarcoBenevento.com for upcoming tour dates. She shouldn't be missed. As we leave you, have a listen to this jam, taken from the Everyone Orchestra Show at the Brooklyn Bowl just a few nights ago, November 10th, 2017. It's aptly called Follow Karina.
right, just so you guys ready, here we go. been listening to the sound podcast technical production by adam karsh and andrea ruse inspired by the grateful dead and you their fans like us on facebook subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and find us at the soundpodcast.com